Hey guys, James Diamond here and welcome to the level 2 course for FL Studio version 21 for beginners. As I said, this is a level 2, so if you haven't watched level 1, I strongly recommend you go and check that out first. There's some really good information there to help you get started in making your track. In this course, we're going to expand further on some of the techniques that we looked at in level one, as well as looking at some brand new techniques to really help you progress as a producer and bring your tracks to the next level. First up, we're going to be looking at some more user interface kind of little tips and tricks just to help your workflow go a little bit better. Then we're going to progress on to some more effects based stuff. So we're going to be looking at the effects chain and we're going to look at the mixer channel and how the different effects work within the mixer channel itself. After that, we're going to be looking at some more advanced techniques such as compression and sidechain compression, two really important techniques to use in music production. And then we're going to be going further and looking at how we can set up bus groups for our channels, which is really, really helpful. And then after that, we're going to be looking Looking at some further automation, how we can use automation to really enhance our track, the final tweaks and then exporting your track for mastering. Just a little bit more kind of information that we didn't go over in level one. So I hope you enjoy the course and I'll see you soon. In this episode, in the first one, we're just going to be briefly looking at some more of the kind of user interface setup. Some of the more kind of, not advanced, but just extra kind of settings to help you really kind of make the most out of FL Studio. So as mentioned in the intro, and there has been a small update between the level 1 FL Studio version and this level 2. Level 2 is onto version 21.2. So very small changes. Now, nothing that is really going to impact um, what we're working on, but just to make sure that you've got the most recent version of FL. So a couple of things we're going to look at. The first one is this toolbar up the top. And this is actually something that I only found out quite recently. Um, I really don't like the look of the toolbar. There's just too many different things, and a lot of stuff is kind of very redundant when it comes to the way that I work. So we've got our kind of standard things like the song and pattern selection, our volume controller, um, press and press and play and stop. And then we've got our metronome, some other bits and bobs. And then we've got some other kind of like recording. We've got the plugin picker and the project picker, tempo tapper, touch control, and then some other kind of things to get into the FL website. We've got like the save buttons and things like this up here, which are really just the kind of shortcuts so when you press a file up here. I don't really need a lot of this stuff. I want to make this a lot more streamlined. And also, I want to remove this second bar here. So what we can do is we can right click up here. And as we can see, we've got different types of presets here on the right hand side. And you can also see down here, we've got my custom bar saved and we'll get into that in a sec. So if we were to click into these, we can see what changes it makes. So kind of, um, each one has a little bit different kind of style to it. And this single line one, this is kind of what I want to do. So let's go back to the, actually the default of this one here. There we go. And all we need to go is, is go right click, edit, and we bring up this nice little bar here. So you have to think, what are you actually going to be using when you're using FL Studio? Is everything here that important? Well, not necessarily. So first of all, I want to get rid of these unnecessary things up here. And all we need to do is just click and drag. And we can take down all of these. We're clicking and dragging into this bottom area here. And as we can see, we've got other parts that aren't actually included in the top bars themselves. So if we wanted to add these in, we just click and drag and put it up there. So now we've got that copy bar or that copy icon. So let's just get remove that. And I don't really want this kind of um, what's new kind of section. So let's get rid of that. And the same with the shop. And then, like I said before, I don't really want this open project. All these project picker, the plugin pickers, tempo tapper I don't really use. And the view touch I don't really want either. And also, I never, never use the pitch panel, like the master pitch. So let's get rid of that. And now I just want to rearrange these. So it's very, very simple. Also, I just want to get rid of the position panel there. And 
let's get rid of these ones as well. I don't generally use these scrolling options and the multi-link. There we go. So now all we need to do is move these to our desired position on the top there. And we have to do these one by one. So these ones are important. Remember there are playlist, channel rack, and the mixer and the browser. So now that that has been kind of sorted out, and let's actually move this to the right, top right as well. And then we can just click this X button here. And there we go. We've got a nice, clean, single line at the top of your project. It actually leaves more room down here, makes it a lot cleaner. And if you want to, you can save this um, this kind of preset that you've made up here. It will automatically go down to the auto save there. But as you can see, I've got my user preset. So all you need to do is right click edit and then go to auto save and then save preset as. And then you can type it in down there. So I'm pretty sure this is pretty similar to what mine is. So if I just go to James Diamond, yeah, very much the same, exact same kind of setup, except I've just moved the order of the parts themselves. So let's have a look at the mixer. There's this one little thing that you may have noticed in the level one course, if you've already watched that, and I hope you have, is that my effects channels are here on the left hand side. And it's my fault, I should have gone through that when we were talking through that course. But the reason that I've got it on the left hand side is because we have the master output here. And I like to always have a look at the master output to make sure that we're not going near the kind of zero dB section. And I find that I'm kind of working from left to right when it comes to my mix down. So like the first thing would be the kick drum and then the hats. And so I'm kind of working from left to right and I scroll along like this. So with this section here, I want to have the EQ and all the kind of effects in quick kind of easy access over here on the left. So in order to change that, it would have already had the, oh, let's just turn that back on. Um, if we go down to view, it would already been on, here we go, so track inspect on left hand side. Default FL Studio puts it onto the far right. Now as you can see, if we're starting on the left here, I know it's very simple, but it's just, I have to keep going over to the right hand side every time, all the way to the right, every time I want to work on something. So I can't move these any further I could move them by holding control, click and drag, and moving them all the way to the middle, but that doesn't make sense, does it? We're working from left to right, same kind of way as you read. So we want to have that on the left-hand side, and we just go view, track inspector, left-hand side. So There's one last thing that I want to have a look at, and that is how to kind of um, just group your effects a little bit easier. So we looked at in level one, putting in a, a few effects, and also obviously you come up here to your effects slots, you click into it, and you've got all your different effects here. I'm not really sure which one FL Studio defaults to. It could be the simple um, icon down here. So we've got three categories, simple and tree. It may be that yours is set up like this, where the simple just simply goes in alphabetical order, and you can see exactly what you've got. Categories obviously splits it into the categories that FL Studio deems these plugins to be. Now this may not always be right, and it can be a bit annoying if, say, for example, API 2500's compressor that I've got, they might think that it's an EQ for some reason, it'll be in the EQ section, and we want to know how to kind of manually move that. But there's an even easier way or even better way that I find, for me personally, I like to have the tree layout. And this now just gets rid of all of our big, big lists. So you're not overwhelmed with everything that's in your face at once. And I go, right, I want a compressor. I hover over my compressors and here are all my external compressors that I've got there. Same with the delay and the reverb. There's some internal and external. And then the same with the EQ. I've got all my different EQs set up. So I want to be able to quickly go in knowing exactly what I want without having lots of different things all in my face. As we can see down here, this is a bit more advanced, but these are the way that you can kind of um, set up quick access. So I'd simply have to press into the slot and the number one button and it brings up the parametric EQ straight away. 
but we don't need to have a look at that. That's a bit more advanced. But let's have a look at how you actually set up these categories here. As I said, sometimes FL Studio doesn't always get it right. So we go into our manage um, kind of plugin section, and then we want to hit here manage plugins. And then we've got all of our different plugins. As you can see, I don't have every single one selected. I'm only selecting the ones that I really use, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's just say the mag EQ. There it is. So now we've got the mag EQ selected. So this is an external plugin. This is for if you're using external plugins, because generally FL Studio will be able to make sure that it puts it in the right folder. So we go onto the plugin option here, and all we'd have to do is type in the category. The category we want to type in is EQ, and then you hit Apply Changes. And then what happens is that when that apply the changes, we come to the EQ, and we can have the mag EQ down here. So let's go ahead and have a look for this Pui Tech. I'm not sure why the mag EQ didn't have that. Sometimes it gets confused between VST 2 and 3. So let's go into the Puitec MEQ5, we'll go into the plugin, and as you can see there, the category is EQ. So if we were to change that and type in something different, that would then create a new subfolder here, and we'd be able to actually then move everything else into it ourselves. So very simple and very easy, but I just think it makes it a little bit easier and kind of, um, it's not as time consuming as when we're looking at this big list like this and we're trying to find everything um, you know all in one kind of area much much easier when it's all kind of put into their own individual folders that's it for the very this very first episode a very quick one uh, we're going to be going into some more detail of some other kind of setup parts for fl studio in the next episode i'll see you then bye